Jesus. God bless us this morning as we stand before him today and hear his voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to decree and declare over you the goodness of God that makes rich and add no sorrow. I want to decree and declare over you the hearing of the ears in the name of Jesus and receiving of the heart to hear and receive God's truth today. Hallelujah. That the fear of the Lord returns back in the name of Jesus to your heart and your mind today. Praise God. Last week, I started part one of return to the fear of the Lord and quickly. And so I want to finish it today, part two. God, this God that we serve is El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty. He's El Elyon, the Most High God. He's Adonai, Lord Master. He's Yahweh, Lord Jehovah. He's Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. He's Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd. He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. He's Jehovah Shama, the Lord is here. He's Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness. He's Jehovah Makadesh. The Lord who sanctifies you. He's El Olam, the everlasting God. Elohim, God. Kana, jealous. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. El Gibor, the mighty God. Jehovah Sabot, the Lord of hosts. And there are over 900 names of this God that we serve. But we've lost our fear of this God. And as a result, we have allowed portals that have been shut by the blood of the Lamb, altars that were torn down by the blood of the lamb because jesus went to the cross because jesus took every sin to the cross altars were broken spirits were put to their place when this country america was founded started it was dedicated to the lord there was a healthy fear of god and so there were things that people did not do. And if they dared to do it, they were confronted. And even before they were confronted, they repented. The church held a prominent place in the land. But man, in his quest for knowledge, in his quest for independence, have turned and moved so far away from God that those very evil that were put under the blood are now back in full force. The bad part is this last state is worse than the first because when the spirit comes back, he brings seven eviler. And could you imagine each of those seven bringing seven eviler. The fear of the Lord. It must be returned. 
And it returns one heart, one at a time. And that's why so many fasts are being called right now. Because it's on belief. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17 that this kind of unbelief goes out by fasting and praying. So I'm calling a fast that this church, those online, will fast with us every third weekend of the month. From Friday, from Thursday sundown until Monday sundown. And the fast will take any form, but it must be food. Whether it's one meal, and the food must be replaced by Bible study and prayer. Jesus said in Matthew twenty-one thirty-six, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. There are things that are going to come to pass. And we have to be accounted worthy to escape those things. Jesus said that except the days were cut short, many will perish. But because of the elect, he will cut those days short. In other words, many of us will escape what's coming upon this world before the end. And what makes us worthy to escape it is having that fear of the Lord. Luke 21, verse 34 to 35 states this. Jesus said, Take heed to yourselves. And pray always. Take heed. In other words, examine yourself. Look to yourself. Use this time of fasting and praying. You don't have to join our fast. Join some fast. Do some fast. What does the fast do? It gives us that opportunity to face our flesh and the demands of our flesh, and say to our flesh, no, no, I'm seeking God's faith. It gives us that opportunity to choose God over the flesh. It gives us that opportunity to say, God, I am so hungry, and I'm using this moment of hunger to turn to you, to ask you by your spirit to speak into my life, to reveal truths to me. I want to tell you, during this fast, every fast that I do, sometimes it takes me a while to get there. He always let me know, you, you need to fast. But when I get there, I am so amazed at what he reveals. And I'm trying to listen to him right now to follow and make sure that I don't say what I shouldn't say. Lord, put a watch to the door of my mouth that I only say what you want me to say. So he said, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time... Your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day, that day that is coming, will come upon you unawares, like a thief in the night, so to speak. That's what he said. That's what Paul says in First Thessalonians. Don't let this come upon you like a thief in the night. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Some of us will be counted worthy to escape. Why? 
because we're living in the fear of the Lord. Let's look some more at what it means to live in the fear of the Lord, what the fear of the Lord does. One of the things that the fear of the Lord does, Psalm 99 tells us the fear of the Lord is clean. It endures forever. The fear of the Lord is clean. So what the fear of the Lord does, it allows us to live a life of holiness. It allows us to smell when the enemy is coming and therefore to take cover through the word of God. Psalm 91 tells us that these snares will not come nigh our blessing, our, our, our dwelling. When we dwell in the shelter of the Most High because we fear him, when we don't fear the Lord, we don't want to be around him. We don't want to be where he is. We don't want to be with his people because we consider them judgmental. We consider them holier than thou. That's how we know. We're not dwelling in the fear of the Lord. But the fear of the Lord, Psalm 99, is clean. Not only is it clean, the Bible says it endures forever. I love to look up the original meaning of these words. What does it mean that the fear of the Lord is clean? Tahor. It means just like I thought. The original Hebrew tahor means it's pure. That's the ne the the word used for it. Pure, fear. So the fear of the Lord is pure. It's not a fear, like it says in Second Tim Timothy one seven, where it's a spirit of the devil. It's not that kind of fear where we run and hide, where we're scared. It's a fear that brings awe because that love for him casts out the fear that will make us run and hide. Now, there is coming a day when many will run and hide from God. But we that love him we that want to draw close to him, we don't have that kind of fear. The kind of fear that we have is awe and respect and honor for his name. We've lost the fear of the Lord. When a child can just out of the blue throw something at a teacher as a teacher is walking by, just throw something, hit the teacher. They've lost or don't have a fear for their parents, first of all, a fear for authority, a fear for adults, much less the fear of the Lord. We need the fear of the Lord again. We need it in our school rooms. There's a shortage of teacher all over America because people don't want to be in the classrooms anymore. And the enemy loves it because the children are protected. Their evil is protected. Instead of protecting the integrity, protecting the authority, the goodness, no. They're protected. I've never seen a country where a squatter can come on my property and sue me. For my property, it shouldn't be allowed to happen, but we've lost the fear of the Lord. Let me show you what else the fear of the Lord does. Not only is it clean and it endures forever, the fear 
of the Lord results in justice. And let me show you that through Jehoshaphat. Second Chronicles 19.1 shows us a story of King Jehoshaphat. It said after they had a spat, they returned in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehoshaphat set up judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah. City by city, King Jehoshaphat set up judges. But he told the judges this, verse 6 of Second Chronicles 19. He says, take heed, same take heed, what you do. For you judge not for a man, but for the Lord, who is with you in judgment. Take heed. What does that take heed mean we started out by telling you take heed examine yourself be careful of be cognizant of this God that we serve who will pay every man according to his deeds who every human being and I'm telling you death will not hide them from God's judgment when the time of judgment comes he will wake the dead even the dead in the sea if anybody died out the sea like those in the Titanic there's still bodies from the Titanic that have Titanic that have not been recovered they will be recovered and stand before God the Bible says so take heed you will stand before God. Verse 7 of Second Chronicles 19, Jehoshaphat told them, he told the judges, he says, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Let the fear of the Lord be upon you and take heed to do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord. Our God is no respecter of persons. Our God does not take gifts, take bribes. So he said, take heed. Let the fear of the Lord come upon you. Verse 9, it continues. He charged them. He gave them a strong warning, a strong command. He says, you shall do in the fear of of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. You shall do your work. You shall judge with a with you shall judge in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. Justice happens in the fear of the Lord because you don't dare make wrong decisions but even our judges have lost that wisdom of God that fear of the Lord Job 28 28 behold the fear of the Lord that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding the fear of the Lord, we showed you last week from Isaiah 11, is a spirit of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. We've lost our fear of the Lord. So we have judges, court, court officials, politicians doing evil because there's no fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is taught and it's caught. It's caught from the Lord, but it's also taught. Psalm 34, 11, Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I taught my daughter the fear of the Lord. I was told to teach my daughter the fear of the Lord. 
how every single day from the time she was about 4 until we were until she was 21 years of age i taught her the word of the lord every morning before she goes to school i would teach her what thus says the lord i'll ask the lord the night before what is it that this child needs to learn what is it that she needs to know and god will give me something and so the next day we will study it as she got older their days then she brought the word and then young people came to join us and there were days when they brought the word but every day we learned the truth of the word of god we learned to reason from the word of god if she came home with a bad report from school i didn't cuss the teacher out or i didn't tell her what the teacher was i reminded her i sent you to school to learn and to bring home to this house a's i'll accept b's but you need to bring me a's that's your job my job is to go out and bring in the food and the clothes and the shelter and whatever else you need your job is to go to school and learn not to give the teacher a hard time and i told her if you are right i will back you a hundred percent but if you are wrong if you are wrong i will not back you i will punish you i will discipline you so when she came home with the report i didn't listen to her say well the teacher did this and the teacher did that i sat her down and i said to her set the scene up i want to see as if i am in your classroom what happened that's the only way to make a judgment and i've taught her to tell the truth so she'll say what well, the teacher said that i shouldn't talk but as soon as she said that I showed her you wrong you are wrong the teacher said do not speak there is no but about it and so we arranged in a situation like that like for instance one day she was taking a spelling test and she came home with a zero and I know there's no way that my child should get a zero because her dad and I quizzed her the night before. We worked with her during the week on our spelling words. We were very diligent parents. We were very diligent. And I knew my daughter couldn't get a zero. And so my husband said, let's handle it. And I said, good, I'll go to the school tomorrow. When I walk into that classroom, the teacher said to me, I'm sorry, I did wrong. And what happened was, we used it as a time to teach her to abstain from all appearances of evil, which is scriptural. We taught her to live by the scripture. She said what happened as she was taking her test, the boy behind her kept tapping, tap, 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 tap. And she was so distracted, she turned around and said to him, stop, please. And because she turned around and said, stop, please, the teacher gave her an F. When I walked into the classroom, he said, I didn't have to make a case for my child. He said, I'm sorry. He said, I should know by her character that that's not what she was doing. So he gave her back her A because she got 100 on that spelling test. And we sat her down and talked to her. The next time such a thing happens, what should you do? 
What could you do instead of speaking what you cannot do during a test? Why doesn't our kids today understand that? And she said, I can raise my hand and ask for permission to speak to the teacher. I can write a note and give it to the teacher. But if the teacher says, do not speak, there is no excuse for you to speak unless you're dying and you need some water or something like that, then yeah, you're excused. Unless there's a dire emergency that means life and death. The teacher says don't speak, you don't speak. That fear of the Lord. Because he taught us in the word to honor authority. Romans chapter 13. So we taught her to reason in the fear of the Lord from the time she was four until she was 21. And so we never, ever, hardly had any problems with school because she judged herself. She judged herself according to the word of God. So you teach your children the fear of the Lord, and they start by honoring and respecting you. If your kid is raising their voice at you, I see you putting on Facebook, you're two-year-old, you're, you're six-month-old arguing with you, and you think it's cute. You're opening a portal for Satan to come in. Satan cannot come to a human being unless he has permission. He cannot exist in our realm without our authority and what gives him authority is anything that's against God's word so when you teach your child to argue with you and you put it on Facebook you put it on Instagram how cute this is no you don't do that you start developing garbage in your child that now the flies can come in and lay maggots. And then you wonder why your child at 10 is rebellious and disobedient. You told that child in no uncertain terms, and there's proof on Facebook and Instagram that it's okay to disrespect you, it's okay to argue with you. No. Why do we put that on Instagram? How stupid our child is. How stupid you are. How you're telling the enemy, you don't have to break my house down to come in. Just come on in. Take over my home. You teach your children obedience. They have to learn to obey you. And that's why you beat them on the fleshy part of their bodies, their backside, when they're little. And so when they get older, just a look at them reminds them of that slap on their butt so they don't do that thing anymore. You train your children in the fear of the Lord. A child that cannot obey a parent cannot obey the Lord until the Lord puts that child through a series of problems to put the flesh under. And it's heartbreaking to watch them go through that. Watch them go through so much. They end up being disobedient. That's why the only commandment with a promise is children obey your parents in the Lord that your days may be long upon the land. Commandment number five, 
We must all strive to honor father and mother. That's where the fear of the Lord begins. The fear of the Lord begins with a child learning to be obedient. When you teach them when they're very small, you teach them in love because perfect love casts out. They don't have to fear you. They understand your love for them, your care for them. Then that child easily can transfer that obedience to God. But there's nothing for them to transfer to God. Because you've taught them to be disobedient. You've taught them to sit in front of the TV and pick up all these subliminal things on TV. Now it's not even hidden anymore. It's not hidden anymore. And you wonder why all those spirits are coming in on them. All the the spirits are flying around because portals are open in your house. Come, children, Psalm 34, 11, hearken unto me, listen unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. You have to teach the fear of the Lord from the time that child, even in the womb, You're talking to that child about the things of God. Psalm 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. See, we think all this knowledge that has increased in technology and now in artificial intelligence, we think that is wisdom. It is. There are four types of wisdom. There's wisdom of the flesh. There's wisdom of the world. There's wisdom of the devil. And then there's wisdom of God, the spirit of God. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of God. And listen, why we need wisdom of God. This entire world was created by God. My husband loves BMWs. He doesn't go to the Volkswagen dealer to ask how to fix his BMW. He doesn't go to the Volkswagen dealer to buy parts for the BMW. No, he gets it from the BMW dealer. If he goes to the junkyard, he doesn't get the parts from a Honda for his BMW. He gets the parts from a BMW. What am I saying? I don't take my vacuum cleaner and hang it up on the wall and leave it there and wish my floor would look clean. That's not what my vacuum cleaner was made to do, to hang on the wall It was made to clean my floor. God is the creator of human beings, of everything. And so who do you go to to ask the wisdom? The creator, God. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom and knowledge that counts that will count in the last day, which is already upon us, which very soon will be the very last day, the day of vengeance of the last days. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And a good understanding have all day that do his commandments His praise endures forever. His praise endures forever. We have to live in the fear of the Lord. And that's why the title of this message says, not only return to the fear of the Lord, but do it quickly. Because 
because the time has run out. The time has run out. It's like when we were younger, and I've said this many times before, my grandmother would go to the market every Saturday. She would go to the market. There were open markets. The beef, whatever was hanging up there, the chicken were clucking around. They'll break the neck and pluck it right there in front of you. She would go to the market every Saturday. And before she left for the market, she told us what she wanted me to do, what she wanted me and my brother to do. I had to get this scraper. It had a little handle on it. It was really like zinc, sharp. And she wanted me to get a bucket of water and soap and go and scrub the stairs. We had 14 front stairs and a platform because our house was on stilts because our country is underwater, so it's easy to flood. And so our house was on stilts so that if the water comes in, it wouldn't flood our house. But she liked her stairs to look nice and slightly yellow instead of dark and ugly. So every Saturday, I had to go scrub it. Well, I was a book reader. I love to read books. I read anything I get my hand on. So as soon as she turned her back, I pulled the book out. And she would warn me. She would warn me when she came home, I better have that those chores done and she wasn't against getting the broom the wooden broom to my behind she was not against we called a wild cane it was wild because it bent easily and they'll pick these canes and they'll clean it up and they'll bend the top of it and when I hit onto the bed she will push that cane onto the bed by the, the hook and pull me out and let me tell you, she'll give it to me good. And I knew that I was going to get it. But those books titillated my flesh. And just the other day, just this week, I was praying that God will break those altars down that some of those books built in me. Anywho, that's a whole different story. My grandmother will go to the market. But at some point, at some point, no matter how long she delayed her coming, she would come. And let me tell you, her coming was upon us. Remember, our house was on stilts. So now we could look out the window or stand on the stair and look straight down the street and we could see her coming down the street. Now it might take her five, ten minutes to get to the house. Because she's walking. But we could see her coming. We could see her coming. And oh buddy, I'm telling you, we scrambled to do whatever we're supposed to do. You never see how fast we could do that job. Usually if she's around and we got to do that job, it seems like it took us forever. She'll have to fuss about it. But at that time, when we know that she was upon us, we learned to do that job fast because we knew what was going to happen when she came through that gate and our chore was not done. Same with the Lord. His coming is upon us. Some of you, if you look ahead through the portals, you'll see all the signs are ready that his coming is upon us. So I'm telling you, return to the Lord quickly. Faster than you've ever done before. Get that chore done. Because the Lord's coming is upon us. Proverbs 1, 7 and Proverbs 9, 10 tells us, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now we've got AI. Even Google will show you how they've been enhanced by artificial intelligence. And I want to tell you, some of those things that are going to come out soon, some that are already out, 
are going to be lies. It's going to be based on what a human being, the narrative that a human being wants our disobedient children to run with. The Bible has already been changed in many arenas, just waiting for the right time to present it at large. And you might think, ah, oh, that never happened. I never thought that homosexuality would be legalized. I never thought that such a thing would happen. But it happened less than 10 years ago. We don't have 10 years for the Bible to be presented in your Google search with all kinds of errors because man decided the Bible is outdated, the blood shouldn't be in it because it's too bloody and violent, the cross shouldn't be in it because it's too bloody and violent. Oh, people have already done it. They're just going to do it on a large scale through artificial intelligence searches now without the blood. Without the cross, there is no redemption, no Christianity, no connection back to God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says in Proverbs 1, 7, but fools, fools despise wisdom and instruction and that's what we're seeing today proverbs 1 29 tell us they hated knowledge they did not choose the fear of the lord you can choose the fear of the lord or you cannot choose the fear of the lord you've got that choice Proverbs 2, 5, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And Proverbs 15, 33 couples this with honor and humility. Before honor is humility, it's coupled with with the fear of the Lord, it's coupled with instruction of wisdom. If you want to be honored, you have to humble yourself before his mighty hand. He will honor you in due season. If not, pride comes and a fall comes. And it's going to. We see it. Satan was kicked out of heaven. He fell because of pride and arrogance. He refused to fear the Lord. He thought to himself, I am beautiful. I am all that and a piece of cake. I should be honored and worshipped. Nobody's going to take God's worship. Nobody. Proverbs 8:33. I'm sorry, Proverbs 8, 13 tells us the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It's to hate pride. It's to hate arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth. Listen, that's why Satan was kicked out of heaven. He did not have the fear of the Lord anymore because he allowed pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the fault he dare use his mouth to declare that he was going to be like the most high. He was going to set himself upon the edges of the high. He was going to be like God. And we're seeing that same spirit at a large rate, in abundance today, even in those that we consider wise, even in teachers that are teaching our children who are already challenged with the fear of the Lord. 
Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Why? The fear of the Lord keeps you from sexually transmitted diseases. The fear of the Lord keeps you from getting addicted because you're not taking drugs, you're not using alcohol. The fear of the Lord keeps you where you understand that you need to tear altars down from the third and fourth generation behind you who did not fear the Lord, and we're eating the fruit of those who did not fear the Lord. Proverbs 14, 27 the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. The fear of the Lord brings long life. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. There's so many snares of death. So many. Right now, the arrow of death is shooting all over looking for somebody to land on to kill them before their time. And it's upon many because they don't have the fear of the Lord. And so these arrows of death has a right to that person. The person gives them the right. When we don't fear the Lord, we give the arrow of death the right to our lives. And only the blood of Jesus can come in and this is where our families seeing it can pray and cry out against those untimely deaths by pleading the blood of Christ for us until we can do it on our own. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and God's children have a place of refuge. We have a place of refuge in the fear of the Lord from the evil around us and that is to come. The Bible says better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. The fear of the Lord caused many to depart from evil, and we need it. Listen, never an hour do we need it than now because the Lord's coming is upon us. Let's look at a couple of scriptures about the fear of the Lord causing men to depart from evil. Proverbs 16, 6, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Being afraid of God's wrath, being afraid of God's judgment, and those who love him, being afraid to hurt him, not wanting to hurt the God we love, cause us not to go the evil route. Proverbs twenty three seventeen. Don't let your heart envy sinners. Some of us look at people and we think, oh my gosh, they're living so large. They're living so good and here I am suffering. The grass is always greener on the other side. What you don't understand, the reason why their grass is green, because it's growing over the septic tank. But sooner or later, that grass growing over the septic tank is going to die and dry up. Because the septic tank is not the right bacteria that it needs. So it's going to be short-lived and temporary. So don't let your heart envy sinners. But you be in the fear of the Lord all day long. Be in the fear of the Lord all day long. Proverbs 19.23 The fear of the Lord tends to life. And he that has it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. You may not have a lot, but if your house has peace, 
if your children are happy and joyous? I mean, there was a day when we didn't have two nickels to rub together. But our house was full of laughter and peace. That's riches. Because the fear of the Lord, Proverbs 22.4, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And it was so neat because the three children at the time, the teenagers, we didn't have money. But they were always getting honored. They were always getting honored. So now I have to rely on my mommy's J.C. Penny card to buy them a dress, to buy Luther or some outfit, because here he's gotten honored for some artist's work that he did. Here she's gotten honored, Nicole's gotten honored for being what they call them, you know, the, the one in the class who's um, honored as, as the leader of the class or whatever, they were always getting honored. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So we didn't have two pennies to rub together, but we had peace and we had love and we had joy and we always ate and ate well. Because of the Lord. One day soon, listen, as I come to the end of this message, one day soon, the fear of the Lord will cause many to hide in horror or bow in honor. But we all, every living being and every dead being, will raise up and worship and honor the great God. Isaiah 2.10, enter into the rock and hide you in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. There's coming a day when many, it says in verse 19 of Isaiah 2, shall go into holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arise to shake terribly the earth. Verse 21 of Isaiah 2, go into the clefts of the rocks, into the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he arise to shake terribly the earth. There is a day coming. Philippians 2 10 tells us that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. So in the end, it will come. It will come happen. Isaiah 35, 5 tells us the Lord is exalted. He dwells on high. The fear of the Lord, verse 6 of Isaiah 33 tells us the fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord. The Lord will be exalted. He will. There's no doubt about it. So let me conclude with this. I want to challenge you to return to the fear of the Lord. Examine yourself. Where have you lost the fear of the Lord? So you call yourself a Christian. And no doubt you are. But are you walking in the fear of the Lord? Are you gossiping? Are you slandering people's names? Are you talking bad about the pastor? Are you disrespectful and dishonoring to your spouse? Then you're not walking in the fear of the Lord. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 2 that the man who dishonors his wife 
the Lord will not hear his prayers. Ephesians 5 tells us that the man should honor his wife like bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, should lay his life down for her like Christ laid his life down for the church. But the woman doesn't get away. The Bible shows that she should honor her husband and protect his ego. Not disrespect and dishonor him. If not, we're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Acts 9.31 shows us that the churches had rest throughout all Judea. And they were all walking in the fear of the Lord. If there's division in the church, if there's gossip in the church, the enemy has entered in, witches have entered in, and the fear of the Lord is not there. And if the pastor is part of the gossiping, that's worse. Let's return to the fear of the Lord. It says the church, it says the churches walked in the fear of the Lord, Acts 9, 31, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, and they were multiplied. There's a story in the book of Daniel, as I come to the end of this message, there's a story in the book of Daniel that I'm not going to read about King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was for seven years roaming about as a madman, eating grass, his hair long and, and dusty because he refused to honor the Lord. And this is what he says in Daniel 4, 34 to 35. At the end of days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned unto me and I blessed the Most High and I praised and honored Him that live forever. Some of you need to lift your eyes up, repent for dishonoring God, lift your eyes up and honor Him and you're going to find that your mind that they think is dementia and Alzheimer's will return to you. It's not dementia, it's not Alzheimer's, it's portals that have been opened up to the enemy to bring confusion as the story of Babel when God came and confused them because they thought we will build a portal to the heavens. Just like Satan. Just like Satan. And some of you lifted up your heart and your eyes against God and confusion has come in because you opened the portal to those spirits and you need to lift your eyes up like Nebuchadnezzar did and bless and praise the Most High. He says this, I bless the Most High and I praise and honored him that live forever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stand, sorry, none can stay his hand or say to him, What are you doing? We, like Nebuchadnezzar, need to repent and realize who God is. And we need to do it quickly. The Bible says, in the end, it shall tarry, but it will come. And just like my grandmother, as we look up the street, was coming. And even though it might take her 10 minutes to get to us, 5 minutes to get to us by the time we spotted her, Sure, as the day was long, she arrived to inspect our work. He is on the way. Habakkuk, 
Habakkuk 2, 3 says, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries, though my grandmother tarried for a while before she came back from the market to inspect the work she left us to do, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and will not tarry. It will surely come. And that's the end of my message. I want to challenge you. Examine what's going on in your home. Are you covering up for your kids? They're living like hell, but you don't want to tell them they're living like hell because you don't want to lose favor in their sight. They don't have any favor in your sight. It's like the story my grandmother told me of the young boy who got sentenced to prison for the wrong deeds that he did. And as he was in the courtroom, he asked the judge, can I bid my grandmother goodbye? And the judge says, yes, you could. And handcuffed with the security bit him, he went over to her and leaned down to kiss her. But instead he bit her ear off. Because he said to her, because of you, I'm here. Because you covered for me. And you didn't teach me what was right and good. Are you so out of the fear of the Lord that like Eli in the Bible, you refuse to discipline your children. And so they're living like hell. Are you in the fear of the Lord? I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Examine yourself. Hey, I'm challenging me too. The Lord took me back to about maybe 30-something years ago and showed me something that I allowed in my daughter that I had to repent for just last night that have opened up little altars that the enemy works in. And you wonder why certain things aren't working. It's because you have portals opened up and the enemy hiding in your flesh, in the house, in your children, and you need to examine in the fear of the Lord. Stop hiding it. Stop hiding it before it's too late. When you stand before God, it's too late. When you close your eyes in death, it's too late. When your child closes his eyes in death, it's too late. That's what the Bible says. While there is yet time, while there is time, today is the day. Today is the acceptable day of the Lord. Today is the day. To call on the name of the Lord. Today is the day to repent and receive the blood of Jesus upon you to cleanse you again. The pure water of the word, the power of the Holy Spirit. Today is the acceptable day. This is the acceptable year. The day of vengeance. His coming is close. His coming is is close and when he comes it's too late it reminds me I saw something about ordering these books and leaving it on your table so that when the rapture comes and some people get left at least they'll see those books and have an idea what happened I think it's by it's by Jimmy Evans I think it's it's about um, where did all those people go? Something like that. So I ordered one to put on my table because I don't plan to be here. And I'm crying out. I've got on my mirror a list of all my blood family. And I'm calling their names out. And those in my blood family who are working obia, 
doing evil deeds. One hand claiming to serve the Lord and the next hand serving Satan. It doesn't happen that way. You can't serve two masters. You can't date Jesus. You can't commit adultery on Jesus. He's an all in all God. It's either him or nothing. He said you can be hot or cold. He says if you're lukewarm, those lukewarm ones, you're working obia. You're going to the shamas. You're going to the obia man and paying him money to pray for you, pray for your children, pray against people that love you because you're envious and jealous. And you're claiming to serve God with the other hand. You're lying to yourself. You're not in the fear of the Lord. It's an abomination to go to Obia. It's an abomination to go to witch doctors. It's an abomination to serve idols. It's abomination. God says me or nothing. He says if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you. Make me sick. I'll spew Spew you out of my mouth. So stop. I want to tell you, stop the obia. Stop the witchcraft. Stop the double-mindedness. You're not fooling anybody because God is showing those who are close to him what you're doing. And it's only his mercy is keeping you alive. Mercy in the prayers of your loved ones. Thank God for the blood. Amen. So God bless you. Be encouraged. Take what I say to heart. This message is not for the faint hearted. Get serious with God before he arrives and then it's too late. Return to the fear of the Lord quickly. I love you. Should he say the same? I will talk with you Thursday. God bless.